But one of the more common symptoms that we see presenting to the office is people feeling like they're dizzy when they're riding in the car. What do you know? That's what we're working on today. So I wanted to walk you through it. I'm going to show you kind of what we found is actually being underlying that dizziness and how we're going to go about solving it in this case. My name is Dr. Nathan Kaiser. I'm a chiropractic neurologist here in Chelsea, Michigan, and we help people that have different forms of brain injury, neurological compromise, and we help them figure out where those problems are stemming from and how we can make them stronger, get them back on the road again. So I want to draw it out for you a little bit in terms of what we're looking at. In the workup, one of the things that we, we found kind of two main features that are really important for this case. Number one, we were able to see when this patient was in the dark, we have a drift of the eyes that we call it down beating nystagmus, or we'll abbreviate it here. And what that means is, so when you look at eyes here, when you look at these in the dark, normally they should just kind of look forward. They shouldn't move around. They shouldn't jerk. They shouldn't drift. But what we see in this case is when they're looking straight ahead in the dark, the eyes are drifting upward. They're both doing it at the same time. As they slowly drift upward, then they correct and quickly kind of recorrect themselves back down. So they drift up and they pop back down like that. And this is happening at a frequency of about every two seconds. So you can imagine if this is going on in the background where your eyes are kind of doing this bounce, it would be kind of like a twitch sensation, that that is going to take more processing time, right? So just the overall amount of processing to be able to interpret your vision is going to require more effort because your eyes are moving when they would normally be still. We have to kind of sort through that little problem. And for some people, they can do that. They don't notice any big major errors, but obviously we see a lot of people where that causes symptoms. So this points us to an area in the brain called the flocculonodular lobe. It's in the cerebellum. It's in the back part of the brain. This area is really in charge of fine tuning some of these movements. So that helps us understand when, you, when you're feeling dizzy and we have this down beating nystagmus, there's a sensation of movement or a postural reflex of anterior movement that's kind of almost like if you were on weight like on a boat. So then we overlap that with number two that led us to look at the capacity of her vergence. So vergence is the eye movement that goes with looking at something near versus looking at something far. And in order to be able to do that, we have to have our eyes be able to, to come in, to be able to focus on a near target or to be able to move out to focus on the far one. Now, normally when you're looking near to far, the spot where your eyes no longer have this vergence element where they start to kind of break toward neutral is right around 18 inches. And after 18 inches, everything's kind of neutral. But as you come in closer than that, your eyes have to move toward each other to be able to do that. And that takes a coordinated effort. So we saw in this case, there was vergence error both near, looking at something near, it was hard to bring both eyes in and have them be able to maintain the target, but also when looking far away. So a lot of times we'll see maybe there's convergence insufficiency where someone can't pull their eyes in or they get jerky when they try to pull their eyes in and it's easier when they go out or vice versa where when they look out they get a virgin spasm or an accommodation spasm and they have a harder time focusing when things are going out what we saw in this case was actually that both if you just think about driving for a second as you're looking down the road and you got your dashboard here you got your speedometer maybe you're driving a tesla so you got a giant computer screen here in the middle but as you think about this far point or this horizon line where your eyes are going to look and look far away. A lot of times we're spending time shifting between things on the dashboard, maybe the steering wheel, but also things that are going by on the side of the road. Maybe you're looking at a sign, right? Maybe there's another car that's coming this way. Trees that are flickering light that are coming in the window or maybe the sun. So all these things are causing us to have to integrate all of this different depth into a picture in our mind. But if we're having a hard time with kind of orienting to what is near and what is far, that processing rate can go a little higher, gets a little harder, and that can cause some of those symptoms of maybe nausea, dizziness to start to develop as you're trying to process all of that different movement that's not coming in perfectly clean. And that's what we were seeing in this case. We looked at that actually technically yesterday, and then today we started working on how do you start to solve for that? So one of the things we're doing is using a whole body vestibular stimulus where we're actually doing a rotation that is relevant to the way that her eyes were kind of malfunctioning or not, or not working correctly. So we do a whole body rotation where we're twisting in a circle and that helps to activate parts of the inner ear that are responsible for talking to this portion of the cerebellum and we're going to strengthen it through that mechanism and what we found was when we spot check that is we were able to go from having that nystagmus that drift up and then pop back down from having it once every two seconds to now we're at once every 10 seconds so it's slowing it down so we're combining using whole body rotation element with some different eye movement strategies that help target near and far movement and we were able to see that change happen in the first First couple hours this morning. We're going to continue with that this afternoon. Our expectation is that we can continue to dampen that, that downbeat down 
and continue improve the stability, improve the balance. And then we'll give some home exercises that go with that, that help this patient to be able to not just make that available, but to make it strong and keep it stable over time. So the same way your dentist is going to clean your teeth. We don't just go in once a, once every six months to get our teeth clean. We keep cleaning them as we go. And that helps us keep that hygiene. So we do the same thing with these neurological exercises so that we take people that are suffering and allow them to, to be able to get back in their life again. So uh, I hope walking through this and being able to just kind of show you what we're working with during the day is helpful. If it is, let me know. Uh, leave a comment, send us an email, let us know how we're doing. But I appreciate you. Thanks a lot.